to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Let me give you an instance. Now, we will never glorify the devil in the name of Jesus, but say... I were not a believer and say I'm some idol worshiper in the village somewhere. If I want to call a spirit from wherever it is to a festival that is happening, do you know what I need to do? My first assignment is to study the habitat of that spirit spiritually and then through these sacrifices i simulate the same environment of that spirit it can now live wherever it is and come right there and still feel at home this is the reason why based on that same principle god is comfortable to be in heaven and yet live in your heart because your heart is a simulation of the throne so he can stay comfortable in your heart the holy ghost has never complained living in you are we together now? Yes. What happens is when you go through that process of salvation, something really happens to your heart. It is heaven manifesting in your heart. Now on legal basis, the Holy Spirit can reside within your heart and find the same comfort that he had when he was on Jesus. Powerful mystery. Listen to me. Most of the problems in our world today are spiritual in origin. Did you know that? And then do you believe that? Please believe. Please, in the name of Jesus and in the name of wisdom, believe early. That most of the problems that a man will face in his lifetime, personally and institutionally, are largely spiritual in origin. Now, when they manifest physically, they will have political expressions. They will have economic expressions. Are we together? They will have sociological expressions, medical expressions, intellectual expressions, but largely, the same way all things came from the realm of the spirit, all troubles come from the realm of the spirit. For further study, I make reference to the book of Job. And you will learn there that nothing just happens in this realm. The book of Job, we've studied it a bit, at least chapter 1 here. Job was a sincere man who was going about his business. The Bible says he feared the Lord and eschewed evil. And then he would offer sacrifices in advance for his children. Then the Bible says one day something happened in the heavens. Is that true? Satan was in their midst and God made a boast of Job. According to scripture, have you considered my servant Job? And then the devil told the Lord, he said, does he serve you for nothing? Give me the permission to touch him. And you will see, paraphrasing, if he will not curse you to your face. And he said, okay, go. I give you permission to touch every other thing but preserve his life. Sin two, there was a certain day. Everything was finished in the realm of the spirit. Let me digress a bit and challenge you. I made up my mind that nothing will be discussed in the realm of the spirit about me without my participation. No way. I will not be a victim of the conclusion of it. No, 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 no. I am a spirit and I dwell in a body. I have the advantage of duality of realms. I have to be invited in that meeting and find out whether the conclusion there has kingdom come connected to it. You don't have to be there in a visionary experience. The word of God is a worthy messenger that can enter the realm of the spirit and represent your interest there. So when I talk of being captured in the realm of the spirit, you don't need a visionary experience. Send the word to be present in that meeting and you are sure that your interest will be defended. Mm. This is how we are represented in the realm of the spirit. We don't have to necessarily be there physically. 
the word of God uttered from the lips of faith can be captured in that meeting. So when there are principalities and powers sitting down and discussing your destiny, don't keep quiet and be the victim of the conclusion on a certain day. Listen, do you know the attack that was going to happen in the book of Esther? They used divination to find a date. It was the realm of the spirit that gave them a date to attack. They didn't just wish. So the realm of the spirit has a way of measuring the weaknesses of men. And it found that day to be the most conducive for whatever reason. It says strike on this date. It has become a principle today. As military men, most terrorists who go for war, they have priesthood that, that go along with them. They don't just hold the sword. They tie all kinds of things that represent their participation with the realm of the spirit. So if you are discussing my destiny in the realm of the spirit, even while I'm sleeping, the word of God will show up in that meeting, invited or not, provided you mention my name. Mentioning my name is the invitation. You cannot mention my name and say I'm not invited. Can I tell you, the days that we live in, if you allow things to just happen and you become the victim of the conclusion, you will see things happen in your life that will surprise you. Every time you pray, whether it is convenient or not, you are sending words like messengers to line up in the realm of the spirit. They are like spiritual immigration officers protecting your interest. Anything that does not represent what the word of God said, they have the assignment to fight it even while you are asleep. Some of you, this is why in your sleep, you see all kinds of things happen. The word of God is engaging the realm of the spirit to your advantage. Listen, if you don't believe what I'm sharing now, you are not a Christian. Believe me. Because this is how the word of God works. The word of God does not just work in this physical realm alone. No, he's been exalted above thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Whether in this world or in the world to come. They were talking about Job. Do you think that Satan just left the presence of God and just ran to Job? He summoned demons. Now here's what will happen. On this day, Thursday, we, this man will wake up in the morning as before. But then it will be tragedy from morning till night. But now in Christ you have the advantage. Why? Because the Spirit of God, if the Holy Spirit can search the mind of God, he can search anybody's mind. Don't worry about trying to know what the devil is doing. The Holy Ghost saves you that trouble. The challenge with many people is that we are not discerning enough to know. So the Holy Ghost comes and then he tells you what to do. And you fire those scriptures. Send them to the realm of the spirit. Scriptures just enter and say, what is going on here? We are discussing his downfall. Based on what it is written, you shall be the head and not the tail. This is true. Believe it. Listen to me. I want you to believe what I'm teaching you. This is how we reign in this kingdom. So there are many of you now Wanting to know who is meeting against you is a waste of time. You can only respond to the ones that you know. But the word of God, complete and whole, send it in prayer. Send it through your confessions to the realm of the spirit to form a garrison around your destiny. Let me tell you this. Before Jesus died, he kept sending the word that I will die, but after three days I will resurrect. Can I tell you, if Jesus Christ did not send the word, those gates will not open. Because now being dead, he did not have a body. And according to the law of territory, once you exit this realm, it will take someone with a body to call you from that realm.
You cannot enter without a body. I know that the gate said, who is this king of glory? But let me ask you a question. Who said lift up your heads? The same way you can be sleeping and a scripture is saying, touch not my anointed. See, if you don't understand this, you will not understand the ministry of prayer investments that you can send the word of God into 2023. You can send it into 2024. It is only you that celebrates New Year. The word of God does not celebrate New Year. There is no such thing as New Year. The realm of the spirit is, is a continual Someone in one minute, can you send words? Send words in one minute. I am the head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus above only and not beneath. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Gentiles come to my light. Kings to the brightness of my rising. The favor of the Lord is upon my life. I decree and declare no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me it will fall in judgment don't be silent i decree and declare a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side none shall hurt me with my eyes shall i see and behold the reward of the wicked that when men say there is a casting down i decree and declare that there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus, my path is as a shining light that shines ever brighter, even unto the perfect day. I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. I am above only, above thrones, dominions, seated with Christ. In the name of Jesus, blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening, blessed in the afternoon blessed in the city favored by the spirit of the living god hallelujah listen please hear me believers you are being trained to know how to be victorious this is what you are receiving A strategy hear me I will tell you the principal way the church is used as a strategy to bring everything to the obedience of Christ do you know how in this kingdom the church executes its role as a strategy through the power of speakings words the primary tool for change for a believer is not just physical action the words especially when you are dealing with demonic forces when you are dealing with systems and structures there is now a place for intelligence and active participation but when you are dealing with the realm of the spirit it is immaterial even though it is real so the weapons of our warfare but they are mighty through God, the Bible says, to the pulling down of strongholds. It says those weapons, they are able to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hear me? For every time you see evil and darkness happening, and you don't do anything about it and say I am helpless you are insulting your construction <laughs> many times because we have not seen the power of words in action we feel that all we do is it just to pray go and ask Daniel in Babylon ask what the parliament sought for they said please silence this man for 30 days Satan wants to act, but every time the, the, the spirits of the Medes and the Persians, the word from Daniel will step into the realm of the spirit and, and completely abort that process. They had to come down with an advice 
that was backed up by government silenced this man from prayer just for 30 days to give us room to cause havoc. Can I tell you this? It is not lack of money that is making the devil prevail over your family. I told you that when it starts from the realm of the spirit, when it arrives physically, it will now have an expression whether it will now diverge itself according to different areas. So when you see that everybody who has a job in your family is losing their job, everybody who has joy, joy does not seem to last in that family. The fact that you can discern it is proof that God is holding a battle axe that is refusing to rise in his hand. God is saying, I want to do something in this family. And here's what a lot of us say, well, I'm, I'm not the wealthiest person, I'm not the most educated, and we bring all those carnal and fleshly excuses. Let me tell you what to do from tonight. Step into your room. Switch from being a man to being a strategy. Lock that door and say, Father, there is something that can be done over this situation. I may not be able to physically give my brother a job. I may not be able to physically stop this plague of death. But in the name of Jesus, step into that control room and begin to send words to manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit until they become consistent with the word of God. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Can I tell you this? Every time you pray only in the face of danger, you are praying late. The real advantage of prayer is to go as a forerunner to your results. That means tomorrow's prayer should not be prayed tomorrow. Uh-uh, you prayed late already. Tomorrow's prayer should enter tomorrow and wait for that day. So that anything that is inconsistent with God's word is stopped immediately. Words are powerful. The Bible says, he used words, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Have this mentality. You are not a nuisance to society. Listen, we keep using mundane parameters and not, not mundane because their vanity is necessarily, but that based on the superiority of what you have, we feel that the only time you are relevant is when I have money. Our world loves and celebrates and even worships money. Or sometimes we feel some level of extended intellectual qualification. So we feel I am only relevant if I can buy a car or I can buy physical things. But everyone here who is in Christ, I want you to know that you are a strategy and there is something you can do. If you cannot bring physical money to solve the problem, if you cannot use influence to partner with systems and structures to make change, you can handle the wicked spirits that work tirelessly. Let me tell you this. If God opens your eyes to see the spiritual activities, demonically speaking, that go on from morning till night over the destiny of one person who is not even a preacher, you will be afraid and it will jack you up to be serious. If a legion of spirits entered one man, a legion in one man. Satan has a dogged, a level of doggedness and resilience. If he did not leave Jesus Christ, he left him and returned back. Can I tell you? Every destiny you see, I don't mean to scare you. The beauty and the glory of your destiny seems to be an invitation. Whenever Satan sees light, he goes there. To find out exactly what is going on there. Let me tell you one of the ways that Satan knows that you have entered a prophetic season. Because according to the realm of the spirit and according to scripture, Satan is not omniscient. Are we together now? Mm -mm. 
Satan does not know all things. Satan omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscience are three exclusive abilities that make God God. He did not even share that one with man. These are the three principal factors. So when we say he has made us gods, we're right. But I taught you that our dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion. Whoever is God is the one who can be omnipresent all places at the same time, omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing. Satan is not omniscient. That means he depends on many factors for the supply of his information. One of it is angelic activities. Because every time a man steps into a prophetic season, there are heightened angelic activities responding. Do you know what those angels are doing? They are moving across the earth and compelling the human systems that must partner with prophecy to make the word of God come to pass. So the angels are busy making you to go to a Sokoro when you should not go because there is someone you need to meet there. All angelic activities and the moment Satan discerns a heightened angelic activity around a life, around a ministry, he knows he was once in the system. So he knows. Prophecy is about to happen here. And so he will come and try to fight you. One of the ways you know, I've taught you here, that you are stepping into a defining moment is unusual attacks. Let me tell you this. Many, most of them will make no sense. This is why you need to pray. Waiting to understand your situation before you pray is living a defeated life. The prayer language was given as an advantage, an all purpose weapon. Is someone learning in church today? Say, I am a strategy. Yes, sir. The church is a strategy that was invented by God's intelligence. That means when you downplay the church, you are downplaying the principal strategy that sustains the ability to reveal Jesus. The strategy is not the denominationalism. The strategy is not the religiosity. The strategy is the church in its purest and its essence. Are we blessed? Please be seated. Thank you. Number two, very quickly. I'm telling you, someone will walk out of this place with confidence. When, when someone comes and says, I just saw you and I felt like sharing something, you will not ask an immature spiritual question, no, 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 I'm not a counselor. You know that, that strategy, because you are a strategy, the Holy Ghost will direct that person. And the person tells you, look, nothing is working in my life. I'm not able to rise, I'm not able to succeed. And while the person is speaking, because you are an effective battle axe, suddenly that anointing will begin to rise. And while you want to look for Apostle Joshua Selman's number, the Holy Spirit will say, no, no, no. He is the one who teaches you that you are the strategy. Now, you do what the strategy does. And you can tell him, well, I'm God's battle axe. Let's pray. And the Holy Spirit said, that's it. That's your own part. You pray. And the person returns by the next day and says, who are you? Then many of us don't have an answer. The devil says, answer him and say, I'm a jobless young Nigerian who just gave his life to Christ and is suffering. Reject that kind of answer. If you don't have anything to say, say, I am a strategy. Strategy of what? The CCTV camera in many organizations is a strategy to ensure and insist that a level of maximum security be kept. Is that true? Yes. So the CCTV is a strategy. And it functions to make sure 
that it captures the happenings around the vicinity to the end that all who come and go are protected. So God has made us strategies. Regardless where you find yourself, if you find yourself in politics, you are a strategy. That means your assignment starts when you identify what is wrong. Bad governance? Okay. In Africa, I am a strategy. Holy Spirit, there has to be a way. If you find out that economically speaking, people within a territory are not making progress, I am a strategy. And he comes to you as that strategy and says, in explaining you as a strategy, you are a kingdom financier. Walk with me and let me bless you so that you can establish amenities and give these people an opportunity to enjoy quality living. You are more than a kingdom financier. You are God's strategy to bring redemption. Moses was more than a prophet. Moses was the strategy that God used to bring an exodus of God's people. You know, as I talk like this, I remember the many visions. Let me share one of them with you. It is fresh to me today as it was many years ago. Never fades because it did not come from a human standpoint. I remember in that vision, I was in an elevated place and then I saw a whole generation of people and in that vision they were crying and saying no food and no water i knew it was not just a group of people it was a whole generation and i felt very responsible and then i was talking with those who were in front just like those seated in front i said who is the cause for this and they pointed their hands unanimously at me and said you are the reason while we are starving from lack of food and water. And I said to myself, I said, no, 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 I will not do this kind of evil against you. And then I made up my mind in that vision. I said, I am coming to rescue you. But then I remembered in that vision that it looked like some people had chased me into that place of confinement. And I was just trying to hide like Gideon. And I made up my mind with the courage of Esther. I said, if I perish, I perish now watch this I opened that door the moment I opened the door to go down I just saw this giant looking gray bearded gray headed man very old with a bright garment giant man he smiled at me and he said give me your hands he said I will walk with you now I know it was the Holy Spirit you see he held my hand and he said, I will walk with you. Very small me, very insignificant me from that vision, but being held by the hands of an ancient giant. Please help those under the anointing. It never tires me to share this experience. Listen carefully. The moment that happened, we were to jump from building to building, but there were small ladders that were connecting one building to building. I was too small to take that giant leap. So he jumped to the other side of the building and was waiting for me to climb slowly through the ladder to connect. And he just placed his hand and was smiling at me. And I was back to myself. What kind of a vision is this? Now I understand. I am a strategy. You must believe that about yourself. You are not just adding to the census, the number. If you, don't, if you don't have this mindset, you will live a defeated life. You will live an angry, jealous, defeated life of failure. You must know that you count. This is more than a motivation. God is counting on you. Don't say there are many people. There is a unique assignment to you as a strategy. Watch this now. Imagine with me for a moment that those who hold the keys to the doors here one person have you been stranded in a meeting because one person did not do his duty have you seen people like that yeah imagine the crowds of people here inside and outside unable to access this facility simply because the man who was holding the padlock to the main gate fell asleep and he just gets up and says sorry 
um, I've kept you people here for four hours. I really was asleep. That's how significant you can be. That means if you do not arise with the mindset of a strategy, if you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't say there are too many churches. No, there are those uniquely assigned to your grace. And if you fail because you think people are doing great things, if you fail, provided you are genuinely called. Most times men of God come to me, sincerely so, and they say, Apostle, well, you are the people who are doing ministry. We are here, you know, just a joke, but then an honest joke to express that we are not making progress. And I tell them something. I said, listen, if the whole world depended on Joshua Selman to supply the spiritual nourishment, the church will fail. Fail so woefully because there are many dimensions captured in this assignment that have not been given to me. And you must be unashamed to admit, accept, and then celebrate the other investments that cut across the body. Wait for my teaching, the unity of faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Encounter with the body of Christ. So when you know this, you can encourage someone. He is playing this keyboard right now. The sound people are doing what they are doing. Everybody working to make this happen. I know that you give the credit to Joshua Selman because he's the face that you see. But behind this face, this strategy, there are other strategies that are making it happen. One more time, prophesy to yourself. Say, I am God's strategy. I think that's a better expression. Because if you say you are a strategy, um, your efficiency depends on who built you. We have fake products and we have real products. Fake products are products, but they are limited by the inexperience of those who produce them. Is that true? There is what we call original. And usually when people build an original product, they have some sort of seal of authenticity that they put on that product. I am God's strategy. If you are a politician, know this. I am God's strategy in politics. A businessman, I am God's strategy in business. You are a minister, I am God's strategy. Can I be honest with you? Every time I come for koinonia or travel for ministrations, many times um, it, it, it can be quite exhausting sometimes. But then I'm awakened by the fact that I am God's strategy. Privileged strategy for this meeting. When I come into a meeting and I sit down and I look at the people, I begin to get happy. Do you know why? Because all they need to do is to invite me upstage. Leave me and the devil, leave me and principalities, leave me and yokes and curses, leave me and ignorance, leave me and imbalance. I know what to do to them. Listen. Fire does not fear how many things are put on it. <laughs> you don't put wood and fire says it's too much. You just leave it for a while. Fire never says too much. Uh -uh. It sustains a unique ability. You can catch it, yet everything physical submits to it. He makes his angels winds and his ministers flames. So when someone comes to me and says, Apostle, there is darkness around my life, there is spiritual ignorance, I'm losing my fire for the things of God, another word, a summary to what you have said is, I need you as God's strategy to be used by God to step in. And with all pleasure, you are welcome. May God locate you in an area where your efficiency will be without struggle. By, by this charge, let me wrap up this first part by encouraging you. Listen to me. The moment you find yourself struggling in an area is proof that the grace is not there. Don't kill yourself and say, there are people who are not ministers of the gospel like preachers. Just admit it with all honesty and look for where there is grace for you. There are people who are not called into the prophetic. They have stretched themselves almost to death because they want to make sure they operate in the prophetic. There are people who are not apostles. It is not a, it is not a degradation. There are people who are, who are beautiful pastors, 
They are shepherds. They may not even be very effective teachers, but they are homely. They can bring everything together. When you find yourself operating in an area, how many of you have held a bunch of keys and they are all keys, but you use the wrong key for a door? Sometimes it can even enter the hole and not be able to turn. It looks exactly like the real key, except that it is not. I submit to you, therefore, that you must obtain grace from God to really know what area have I been assigned to? Some of you are intercessors, like Anna the prophetess, like Simeon the prophet. Find rest in that noble ministry and see it as noble as preaching before a crowd on a crusade ground. There are some of you who are kingdom financiers. You may never have the opportunity to minister as we are doing, but God has anointed you to be the strategy that ensures that the work of the kingdom never fails. Don't fail in that assignment. There are many kingdom financiers who left the work of kingdom financing to go to the pulpit simply because there seems to be some psychological attachment to being on the pulpit, especially when you are leading and heading the ministry. Psychologically speaking, you are generally considered. If I ask you to arrange people in the kingdom according to nobility of call, chances are that you will place people like us in front simply because of the supposed charismatism around our call. But you may be wrong. It will take God to arrange people according. Do you know the more God hides you, the more you are nobler. Look at it in the building of the human body. There are parts that you cannot see. Imagine if your heart was on your head. You would die when an angry person comes near you. He will hold that heart and squeeze it till you die. So God kept it and covered it with bones. Now you ignore the heart simply because it's not the hands and the fingers you are seeing. When your heart fails, let every other thing be alive. You will still die correct so i'm teaching you as kingdom people that the more you are exposed doesn't mean you are not noble every call is a high calling but let me tell you when god intentionally hides you and makes you to play a background role just know that he's protecting you jealously it is a sign that you are truly noble some of the people who pray for me as a ministry you may never see them. They may never come on this pulpit. I met with a group of women um, a few weeks ago while I traveled to a particular region and I was told that these women, very, about seven or so of them, very, very, you know, um, marvelously helped by God, accomplished women. And they said, Apostle, God gave us a mandate to pray for you. We are your intercessors by God. When I saw them, I was so broken. I said, How, what do I do to these people to let them know that I love and appreciate them? Now, when you see Joshua Selman doing well and doing exploits, you think he's just a product of his personal prayer life. Until the day we stand before Jesus, you will see how many people's prayer provided the leverage for us to rise to this level. And anybody, listen, let me teach you. The moment you are in a position of visibility, be wise enough to know that the invisible is what bets the visible. Are we together? Because our world is sensual and carnally minded. Chances are that you who is the one in the elevated position that is seen by everyone, usually if someone wants to sow a seed now, Chances are that he will not give you the seed as my intercessor. It's me you will bring the seed to because he believes I am the one blessing him. But let me tell you, when God's reward system begins to spread around, he will pick you and honor you with the same gravity that he's honoring the preacher. There are people because of their efficiency as God's strategy, praying for men of God, for instance, praying for nations, you will find out that God will covenant with them that their whole family must have leaders. They may not be very educated, but you will never lack leaders in those families. It is God's covenant and his reward system. I hope that one time we'll have the opportunity to, to look at the subject of prophetic intercession. And I'm going to be teaching you 
the benefits and the blessings that follow an intercessor. But for now, it's sufficient for you to know that you are God's battle axe. Next time someone looks at you and says you are useless, a non-entity, either because some physical results that they expect to be there is not there, maybe like money, a car, a house, or some, some earthly parameters of defining success, find solace in the fact that you are a strategy. Every key remains dormant until it gets to the door it was assigned to open. You can hold a key for a long time and think that key is useless. If that is the key that opens the restroom, when you are pressed, you will know how efficient that key is. If that is the key to the kitchen, when you are hungry, you will know how efficient that key is. So that God may not seem to be doing so much physically with you, it does not mean you are not part of that army. It does not mean, it's just that we have not gotten to the page of the story where your relevance is needed. Keep building yourself. Keep waiting, knowing that you are a strategy. Mary, you are a strategy. But if the angel has not announced the coming of Jesus, it will look like you are just an ordinary woman. Be patient. Elizabeth, if, if John the Baptist is not yet uh, ready to come, it will look like you are just some barren woman who married a prophet. I am God's strategy. Number two, what is the church? Is God speaking to someone? The church refers to the men and the women. So first the church is a strategy. And then the second, the church refers to the men and women, the human vessels. The human vessels. that are number one the host of heaven on earth and then number two the executors of god's purposes i will take it again the church refers to men and women that are number one the host h-o-s-t-s -S. we are the ones who host god god will not go and dwell in some mountain somewhere he dwells in believers so the church refers to these human vessels that have sustained the ability to hold this treasure, heaven in us. And then the church also refers to the men and the women who are the executors of God's purposes. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Let's hurry up. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, ye also as lively stones are built into a built up into a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ he calls us lively stones he says we are a spiritual house though human we are that temple that God resides he resides in me he lives in me the reason why you feel the presence of God on earth, the reason why you see him manifest on earth is because there are human vessels that have accepted to be hosts for him. And number two, there are human vessels that have accepted to be the executors of his purposes. Can I tell you this? Plans and purposes are vain until you find not only a strategy, you find the human vessels that are willing to execute it. I give you an instance. If you come up with a beautiful plan, even a beautiful strategy, say for building a structure like this, you will need someone who will carry that plan and translate it from what is written on paper to this material expression. The church in addition to being a strategy, we are the executors of the will and the purposes of God. That means every time God wants to execute his will and his purposes, we are the ones he sends. Are we together? Romans chapter 12, please. Give us Romans chapter 12 and we'll start our reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 12 and verse 4. 
It says, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Uh -huh. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. The church does not just refer to a strategy alone. The church also refers to a people. A people. The people. God's chosen people. The ones who become the principal executors of his will and his plan. Let me tell you what that means. That everything God decides to do is executed on earth through the church. Here's how Jesus put it in his prayer. He says, when you pray, ask the Father that it be done in earth as it is in heaven. The earth there is not just talking about the physical land. The first earth is you. Let it be done in my life and then through my life as it is in heaven. That means when there are no human vessels, look up please. Did you know that every time there are no human vessels, even when there is a strategy for God's program, God's program becomes limited until he finds a man. Read your Bible and see how many times God's programs were delayed because there were no sufficient human vessels that were worked upon and trained to be the executors of his will. It took Moses a long time. God had a strategy to save his people from Egypt and to take them to a land flowing with milk and honey. But he needed a man and then from that man, he would mobilize a people. Same thing happened to Gideon when they had come under the yoke of the Midianites. God found a man, Gideon, and from that man, he mobilized 32,000 people and they were reduced to 300. And Gideon, alongside 300 men, brought victory for the nation of Israel. Can I tell you this? The church refer to men, not cheers. Cheers without men is not the church. A good sermon without the men to listen to it does not make the church. The church refer to the men and the women. Based on this definition, you see that this whole idea... Now, I say this respectfully, but this whole idea of refusing people from coming to the house of God to hear the word of God uh, simply because uh, sometimes it's misunderstood to be just a passion to have crowd. No, no. The church refers to men and women. And if those men and women are not there to hear, to be changed, it means that the purposes of God will suffer because there would not be sufficient people to be executors of the same. Are we together? In gathering is your, your, your kingdom responsibility to bring in more men to the fold so that they be trained, so that they be equipped and then they can be used by God. Without men, there is no church. Assume with me, for instance, that I come in here and there is absolutely nobody. Now I'm preaching and I'm talking. All I'm doing is just rehearsals or talking with the Holy Spirit. But as far as church is concerned, church happens when there is God and when there are men. It took God and Jacob to be called the house of God even heaven is not called the house of God it took God and a man on earth and Jacob said surely this is the house of God even though the gate of heaven can I tell you this if you are a preacher here or you are a worker in church you have a kingdom responsibility to see that in gathering never ceases with you. You have a kingdom responsibility, not through force and manipulation, but through revelation. That it is noble every time you bring people to the house of God, you give them an opportunity to experience the ministry of transformation, of building, of training. The more God finds men, the more his purposes can advance. Did you believe that? Yes, sir. 
The more genuine believers we have within our territory, the more the purposes of God can find expression. When there are few men who call upon the name of the Lord, when there are few men who sustain spiritual intelligence, it's going to be difficult to advance the purposes of God. So we have to continue to pray that in as much as God has blessed us as a ministry and as a global family, there are still many people who need to be part of this fold. And we must continue to trust God that through the signs and wonders, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and through the responsibility of ingathering, God is going to grant grace that his house be filled with men, not just men who endorse the call of a man of God, but men who can be trained, can be equipped, and can be efficient. Man of God, if that is your motivation for ingathering, fire on. But if the motivation becomes a mundane pursuit just to bring some accreditation and add to the list of those who are making things happen, it is not a pure motivation. My motivation as a man of God has always and will ever remain to see that God brings as many people who need to be trained, who need to be equipped and to be released to become um, this vast army that God will use for kingdom come. And this we will not fail to do in the name of Jesus Christ. So every time you say the church, you are referring to a spiritual strategy. The strategy that brings dominion over principalities and powers and sees to it that Jesus Christ is enthroned. When you say the church, it also refers to men. Without men, there is no church. I repeat, without men, there is no church. That means... The extended meaning of this is that every time God sends men to church, we must obtain the grace to treat those men with honor, knowing that without men, there is no church. Now, it is not a license to come and trouble people in church and people just transfer the pain they've had from office and the pain they've had from other things and just punish the church to be... The, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm teaching. But I'm saying that if you know that the church refers to men. Every time God sends those men, you are grateful and you serve them the meal of God's word principally and then make sure that within the time that they are under your influence, they feel the love, the warmth, the peace, the fellowship that befits those who are called by the name of the Lord. Here in life... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Get a brand that got up a good hosco to break a take a look at her. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.